You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I'd do something a little different today, considering how we're all going crazy, I'm sure. Um, Bored out of our minds with nothing to do, nowhere to go. The battlefield is outdoors, so it's a beautiful day, and I thought I'd come out here. I was recording something else by... Um, the Trosel Farm, and I got this idea. I'm bored out of my mind sitting in the house, so I figured, why don't I read to you the wayside markers around the battlefield? Not every single one of them, but a good number of them whenever I feel like it. So here is Bigelow's desperate stand from the Trosel Farm area, um, and we'll start with a quote from Captain John Bigelow, USA, 9th Massachusetts Artillery. Horses were plunging and laying all around. The enemy were yelling like demons, yet my men kept up a rapid fire. Here on the farm of Abraham Trossel on the afternoon of July 2nd, Captain John Bigelow positioned the sixth cannon of his 9th Massachusetts battery. Attacking Confederates who had driven Bigelow back from the peach orchard had him backed up against the stone wall to the right. As Bigelow prepared to limber up and retreat again, his superior, Lieutenant Colonel Freeman McGilvery, rode up with the order to hold the position at all hazards until a Union line could be established in the rear. Bigelow's gunners would have to face the Confederate onslaught without infantry support. The cannoneers piled ammunition beside the guns for rapid loading. Soon, Mississippians and South Carolinians crowded right up to the muzzles of the Union guns, only to be blown away. When Confederate marksmen reached the farm buildings and began shooting cannoneers and their horses, Bigelow's men made their escape. The Confederates captured four cannon, but Bigelow had bought valuable time. And then regarding Sickles' headquarters, the marker says, Major General Daniel E. Sickles, controversial commander of the Union Third Corps, established his headquarters beside the Trossel barn here. As Sickles' line began to collapse on the afternoon of July 2nd, a Confederate cannonball struck the general's right leg. A stretcher bearer slowed the bleeding with a saddle strap tourniquet. Army surgeons amputated the leg that night. Although many believe Sickles nearly lost Gettysburg for the Union, he helped to save it in 1895 by introducing legislation establishing Gettysburg National Military Park. 